Okay, so we're going to look at how to center content in HTML using CSS. So I have this uh, slightly empty project. It's just one file called index.html. And as you can see, the file is quite boilerplate. Also, we have another folder called style sheets. And in this style sheets folder, we have a main.css file. However, in this file, there are no styles. So returning to this uh, index.html file, having a look at what it looks like in the browser, it's just an empty page. So let's get started and assume we have a text which just says hello world and is an h1 tag, meaning it's a header. So the, the goal is now for this text to be horizontally centered into the center of this page. Now the most straightforward way of uh, achieving this would just be to add the center value to the text aligned property and putting this on the selector body. Now we might put this on the selector directly, we could put it on H1, but now I chose to put it on body. This would put the text into the middle of the page, quite straightforward. Now, however, let's assume that we've actually put this H1 tag uh, in a div. And this might be because, let's say for this div, we want to have a background color of red. So what happens now is that the div is filled with the color red, and the text is still centered. This is because CSS cascades styles. So we've said that uh, everything inside body should have the text aligned center, which means that uh, the text aligned centering cascades down from body down to the div and down to the h1. However, what happens with a div is that the div remains in its sort of default state where it just stretches out to the page. So it might appear as, as that the div is horizontally centered, but it's actually not. It's actually just stretched out. We can illustrate this by giving the div a fixed width of, let's say, 400 pixels. Now you can see the div has a fixed size and thus it actually aligns to the left and not to the center, whereas the text inside the div is still uh, horizontally centered. Now, a hacky way of solving this would be to change the display property of the div and say that it's an inline block. That would actually put it into the center. So now the div behaves almost like an inline element. However, I wouldn't recommend doing this, but I just wanted to show you how, how that behaves. Another interesting property would be that if we duplicate this div, we would see that these divs stack up next to each other. Now, this is an unnatural behavior of div because if we remove the inline block statement, uh, these actually stack up after each other. So the default state of a div is to have uh, display as block, right? But we put it to inline block. So uh, let's remove this second div and let's get on to another idea. So the most common approach would be to say that the div has a margin which is zero and auto. Let's have a look at this. That puts the div in, into the center of the page and the text remains at the center because we've kept this text align center property. Now, the reason this works is that we have the width of 400 pixels. If we remove the width of 400 pixels and refresh the page, we're back into the state where the div just stretches out to the whole page. So for this to work, we need to have some kind of width for the div element. And let me also say that margin zero auto actually means the same thing as margin zero auto zero auto. And this actually means the same thing as saying that margin top is zero and margin left is auto and margin etc etc for right. So left and right goes to auto, top and bottom goes to zero, right? And this is just a shorthand for saying this is the top, uh, top bottom value and this is the left right value. So this is just CSS shorthand. But anyways, this works if we put it to a uh, fixed width. Now what we could do, of course, is just also to say something like, I want the width to be 25% of the page. This also works. We could say this is 60% of the page. So let me just show you that if I resize it, it still stays into the, in the middle of the page. Okay, so let's now look at a slightly more contrived way of doing this. What we could do is that we could also use the idea of positioning something absolutely. Now, to position something absolutely means that we want this particular element to ignore the regular flow that it would have in the document, and now we would just put it into any kind of position. So what we could do now is just say something like top 20 pixels and maybe write uh, 100 pixels. This would look something like this. So we're now pushing it down from the top of the page or from the top of its container by 10 pixels and from the right 100 pixels. And now you can see if I resize the page, it sort of stays fixed 
and no matter how, how we would do it, it just ignores its regular flow. So how can we use this to our advantage? Well, we could, what we could do is that we could say left 50%. This puts it in the exact middle. However, it puts the top left corner of the box in the center. So if I make the window smaller, it becomes clearer that this is the center, but we actually want the center of the div to be in the center of the page. Now, how would we accomplish this? Again, let's, let's, give, the, let's give the box a width. So let's say that it's 200 pixels. And now we could do something like give it a margin, which is negative, which is half of the width. That would put it in the absolute middle. Let's have a look at this. And it's in the middle. Now, this, of course, forces us to put a fixed value into the width of, of the div. However, what we could do is, again, use percentages. So let's say that it's 40% uh, of the page. We want the width to be 40%, and then set the margin left to be half of this width, which would be 20%. So we're saying have a width of 40% and have a margin left of negative 20%. We'll refresh this, and we can see that we're now using percentages. And if we resize the page, we're still always in the middle but the box also resizes. Let's just rock another value. Let's say 80% and half of 80 is 40, right? We're in the center of the page. The box resizes. And it's all very adaptive. OK, so let's now look at something more interesting. Let's try and make this div also be vertically centered. Now, vertical centering is not as trivial as horizontal uh, centering. So one could imagine that what we could do is just say that, OK, well, uh, we could do this with percentages for left and right. Let's just do the same thing for, from, from the top. So let's, let's say that we'll have a top placement of 50%, and we'll have a margin top of negative uh, of the height. We haven't specified a height yet. So let's uh, assume it's 40%. So half of 40 is, is 20. So now we'll say that the height is 40%. So the interesting. Uh, the, the important point to note here is that we've set the height to 40% of the page, and that we've set the margin top to be half of this height, so minus 20 as half of 40, and we're putting it into the vertical middle. OK, let's look at this. This doesn't at all behave as expected, which is highly unfortunate, of course. So horizontal centering still works, but you can see that as I resize horizontally, the box unexpectedly moves. So this is due to the slightly odd decision made that if we specify the margin top as a percentage value, then that percentage value is dependent on the width of the page. Just as in the case of specifying a margin left or a margin right in percentage, that is dependent on the width of the page. Also, margin top and margin bottom is dependent on the width of the page. So you can see that if I, if I resize the page horizontally, Yes, the, the height of the box changes, but uh, the margin top doesn't actually change, which is what we wanted. So this, on, this technique only works for uh, horizontal centering and not for vertical centering. And even if we would try to go back to the old idea where we didn't have position absolute, and we just uh, gave the box a width of, let's say, 200 again, and we said that the margin was zero auto, right? That put the box into the horizontal center of the page. Now, the common idea would be that, OK, so this ought to work for height as well. So let's just say auto auto. And let's just say that the height is 200 pixels as well. Again, unfortunately, this doesn't work. So how do we then solve this idea of vertical centering? Now, the easiest way would be to just introduce the idea of having a, an absolute position again. And let's say that the width is 200 pixels, the height is 200 pixels. Let's remove this idea of a margin. Say that the margin left would be minus 100 pixels. So we're back to the idea where the width is a, a value, and the margin left is half of that value in negative. Let's look at that. Oh, sorry, I forgot to put uh, left to be 50%. Sorry. So we're saying that left position is at half of the page, at 50% of the page from the left. Uh, the width is 200 pixels. and the margin left is negative of half of the width. That puts the, the, the div back into the center of the page horizontally. Now let's do the same thing for the vertical value. So let's say margin top is minus 100 pixels. And this is 100 pixels not because the width is 200 pixels, but because the height is 200 pixels. And let's also say that top is 50%. So this now actually works. 
So you can see that if I resize this window, it stays in the middle at all times. Now again, it worked this time because I gave the height a specific value. So if I would say that the height is 20% and that the margin top is minus 10%, we're back in a state where it doesn't work again because margin top in percentage does not work on window height, but on window width or actually on container width. So unfortunately, this only works for fixed numbers. Now we could switch the width to, for example, uh, 50%. And then margin left would be minus 25%. That works for the width, and we have a fixed height. Okay, but what if we actually have a dynamic height? What if we actually have a height that we want to be dependent on the page? So then a, a completely different approach would be uh, sensible. We could just say that the position is absolute, and we could say that we we would say that left is zero, top is zero, right is zero, and bottom is zero. What happens now? This makes the div fill out the whole page. Why? Because top is zero, so the div hits the top. Left is zero, so the div hits the left. And right, and same for bottom. And you can see that it's, that's actually the case because if I resize the window, there are no scroll bars introduced. So this div will always fill up the full window. Now what we could do now is that we could put specific values here instead of zero. So let's say we put 20 pixels. That would give us a 20, 20 pixel margin, but it's in a some sense always centered. Let's put something more drastic, let's say 200 pixels. That gives us a, a center div with 200 pixels from all angles. Now you can see this approach do, does have some problems because if we make the window smaller and smaller and smaller, uh, we'll cross the boundary where this, this word doesn't actually fit. Now what we could do as well is that we could put a percentage value here. So let's put 3% instead of pixels. Now then that works in percentages. And as you can see, top and bottom is not uh, acting the same way that margin top and margin bottom did in that it calculated the percentage from the width of the container, but now it actually calculates from the height of the container. So in the top and the margin and the bottom is actually 3% of the height. You can see that because the spacing in the top is different from the spacing in the right because it's all 3%. Another way we could approach this is to return to the idea of zero and then use margin. So we could use a margin of say 25 pixels. That would achieve the same effect. We're pushing in 25 pixels from all angles. Or we could again do something more drastic and say 200 pixels. So we're pushing in 200 pixels from all angles. However, again now, since we're in margin, if we now put 20% instead of pixels, actually 20% was quite a large number, so let's say 3%, then you can see all margins are now the same. No matter how I resize, the top, the, the top margin here, the top white space, is always the same size as the right white space. Again, because margin top and margin bottom percentages work on window width. So this is quite good if we want to have an equal border around or an equal margin around. And again, if I put this out into something more drastic, then we have more like a more naturally centered uh, div. So the last thing I want to show you is that I want to approach this problem where if we resize the window, where if we resize the window and make it too small, the text sort of flows outside of the div's boundaries. Now the easiest way to approach this would just be to use uh, the min height attribute because it's the height that's the problem. Maybe we could just say that the min height would be 200 pixels. What happens now is that no matter how we resize it, the height cannot be lower than 200 pixels. So if I make this page very small, we instead get a scroll bar. We're still pushing down 50% of the page height, but now we get a scroll bar instead. And if I go further, it's going to expand. And this same approach could of course be applied to, to the width, where we could say that the minimum width would have to be something like 200 pixels. Oh, actually 200 was maybe too small, so let's say 400. So now, here, here it expands and contracts, but at 400 it stops, and then we just get a scroll bar instead. It's like we're saying, okay, this page can't be any smaller than X. Now, as always with CSS, there is a million ways of doing the same thing, so I do encourage you to look up other ways of trying to approach this problem, because I understand this does not solve every possible scenario. However, I hope this was a good introduction to some of the possible ways to approach this. Thank you.